you want to have an anointed ministry, call for a response. Call for a response, a decision, an action, some kind of response. Always teach for response, not just to transmit information. Information has to lead to transformation. And I believe that every time we're exposed to a truth in God's Word, whether it's in our quiet time, it's in a Sunday morning worship service, it's in a conference like this, every time we're exposed to truth, I believe that a personal response is required. And if we don't, I've been to conferences, and sometimes we fall into this ourselves. What happens, you get to conferences where it's wall-to-wall speaking, and we don't prepare hearts, we don't follow up on messages, and what happens is people are left in that Luke 8 condition where they wear a, 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 a path on the soil of their hearts because they've walked over, they've been hearers but not doers again and again and again and again, and finally the soil gets packed down hard, hard and the seed just bounces off. And that happens to people who are sitting in our churches day after, week after week because we're not calling for a response. James 1 says, if you listen, but you don't do something about it, you are self-deceived. There's a danger of aborting the birthing process in people's lives by just laying content on them without asking them to do something about it. However the Spirit directs them, it needs to be appropriate, gospel-oriented, grace-induced, and do spirit-led responses in whatever way the spirit may be working in their hearts. And that will differ from person to person, from message to message. The response is not always the same for every hearer. Sometimes what the response is just simple affirmation. Agree with what God has said. Affirm it to be true. Say amen in your heart. That may be the response. Sometimes the response is submission. Wave the white flag of surrender. Say, yes, Lord. Sometimes the response is exaltation. To celebrate and rejoice in what God has said to us, what he's revealed about himself through his word. Sometimes the response is reflection, meditation, contemplation. Selah. Stop and think about this. Meditate on it. Savor it. Ponder it in your heart. Consider what implications it has for your life. Sometimes the response is confession, repentance. Don't take the heat off people when the Spirit of God is moving in conviction. Don't rescue them from the cross. Now, our goal is not to put people under a pile of guilt and say, you always need to be introspecting, seeing is there some sin you've committed. Listen, the Holy Spirit is great at exposing what needs to be confessed. But don't move on so quickly that you miss the opportunity for people to respond to the Spirit. Take it home. A lot of times that's missing, I think, in our teaching, our preaching. Call for a decision. Call for a response. Now, you can't tell people what that should be, what that should look like. I like actually to call people to make some kind of verbal or visible or physical response. I often will encourage people in our audiences to kneel as, as an expression of humility or to stand or to um, pray with someone else or to share something with someone else. And yes, that can be uncomfortable. But I think it's so important to get it out of. We just communicated it to the head, but we're saying something needs to be done with what you just heard. 